Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name's Alex and today as per the title of this video, I will be showing how I take notes on my iPad, aka the impulsive splurge that I did of last year of 2021 in response to my mental breakdown during online school. Ah, wonderful times, right? So let's get started off with the materials. First up is the main star of this video, the iPad. I believe I own the iPad 2021 generation without the M1 chip, and the iPad is currently wearing the Logitech Combo Touch case. I initially didn't think I would want a keyboard for this iPad, but I decided to go with the Logitech Combo Touch because I didn't want to spend $400 on the Magic Keyboard. And obviously, I pair this with the Apple Pencil 2nd generation, which is wearing a very cute purple cat silicone sleeve. I will make sure to link all of these in the description box if you're interested. Uh, sometimes I like to switch things up. I sometimes put my iPad in the OtterBox case that I got from the Apple Store. I am not familiar with the exact name of this product, but I will make sure to also link this in the description box if you're interested. There are currently many apps for note taking, such as GoodNotes 5, Notability, OneNote by Microsoft, Evernote, and you can even type out notes on Notion. However, in this particular video, I will be using GoodNotes 5 since I am more familiar and comfortable with this software. I do use OneNote since I have access to the features thanks to student tuition. And I'm not sure, but I think my school has some sort of deal with this company. I think all universities do. So thank you universities for giving me free access to all the office programs. I tend to use OneNote only when I'm typing out notes. I am not too much of a fan of the writing tool because it doesn't look stabilized in my opinion. To me, OneNote pen tool is choppy and my strokes look inconsistent. That's what she said. Writing strokes, I mean, look inconsistent in comparison to good notes. And also, I don't like how I have to change my iPad to dark mode in order to get the black paper on OneNote. I just find it very inconvenient as to where on GoodNotes, I have a variety of templates to choose from and color paper to choose from as well. A feature I really like about GoodNotes is the magnifying box. This just makes it really easy for me to get in there that's what she said hey shut up i like to zoom in when i'm writing and when i zoom in it's kind of hard for me to see like what i'm writing and like what it looks like and to see if it's straight and the magnifying box just makes it easier for me to see the full page without having to do the work of zooming out and yeah okay guys let's actually get to the reason why you clicked on the video in the first place oh my god when using white paper my favorite color palette. For pen sizes, I like to use 0.5 milliliters for the main writing and 1.35 milliliters for the titles. For highlighters, I also customize all these colors myself. They just remind me of the Zebra Mild Liners, which is a classic favorite of the study wear community. Thickness, I use 3.95 and also 6.65 milliliters. And here's me swatching the highlighter thickness. Okay, so when I'm using black paper, I like to choose between the white and pastel colored inks because it stands out more. For white, I use it for the main bulk of the notes. White just seems to stand out more against the black paper and to me, white just seems to be a pleasing color in my opinion. For red, I like to use it for quick added notes, so like quick added summaries of the information from the lecture slides. For green, I like to use it for definitions or important vocabulary. For blue, I like to use it for key points or underlining since it's kind of hard to see the highlighter on black paper. For purple and orange, I like to use it for diagrams. Specifically, the purple is used for labels and orange is used for drawings. For pink, I like to use it for annotations. So sometimes when I'm reading my notes, I would like 
annotate my own notes this just helps with memory for me and for pastel yellow i like to use it for drawings as well and other sub thoughts okay so moving forward with methods of note taking first i will start off with the outlining method here are the symbols i like to use for when taking notes when I'm writing my subtitles, I like to underline it. And when I am actually taking the notes, I like to use a dash for the main points. And this is just going to be a quick and simple. And then I will put an indent and use a dot to expand on the main point. And then I will put another indent and use an arrow to expand further on the information. And then sometimes I would like to use an angled arrow so I can go in more detail with the information I just wrote. And sometimes I like to box my subtitles. It depends on the day. And for the main title, I like to use 1.65 milliliters to make the title really bold and stand out. Okay, so moving on with the pros and cons of the outlining method. requires more thought when revising for exams. Number two, you have the tendency to write irrelevant information or information that is not important because you have unlimited space. And now let's move on to the Cornell method. If you're not familiar with the Cornell method, it's basically when you draw a big box on your page and you're going to split it into three sections. The left column is used for questions or subtitles. The right column is used for the notes or course content itself. And the bottom is used for summaries. And sometimes I like to put my own twist and use it for profs verbal information that is not in the lecture slides. Just like the outline method, I will tell you the pros and cons of Cornell method. It's more organized because you have it split into three sections. Number two, it's more efficient for revising. Number three, it saves time because of the limited space and so you're able to drop down the more important notes. For cons, there's only one con in my opinion and that is you have to make sure you're prepared because you have to draw the box. But I believe on Google there's many templates for the Cornell method. For the last method, this one is actually my favorite. subjects that are calculation content heavy i like to take screenshots of the online homework place them all on one note page and then on an ipad i will open this on goodnotes and from there i will redo the questions but showing all the steps and extra information of why the calculations are performed to get the answer for memorization heavy content subjects i like to use mind maps to make connections so it's easier to have a summary when studying for exams And that is how I take notes using my iPad. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more of my content.